Good morning, classroom. Welcome to your physical science class for the day. This is your host, Mr. Jacobs, who's attempting to make this video more YouTube-y to keep your attention. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and get my merch. You'll find it all over on my channel page. And hit that bell to make sure that you're getting all of the great physical science content that you need. Physical science, here whenever Mr. Jacobs uploads a video. Welcome today, class. Today we're going to continue talking about energy. As we're talking about energy, we're going to take a look. I'm curious if we had like a, a tagline or a slogan for this class, which you guys think it would be. Um, when we're talking about energy, so we're going to finish kind of lecturing through chapter two. Your homework for the week is you're going to be going through and answering all of the 2.3 questions. So that's 2.3 A, B, C, D, and yes, there is in fact an E. After that, you're going to answer all the chapter two exercises and then make some flashcards. And then at the end of the week, you're going to take your quiz on this chapter, turn that in for lesson three, and move on to spring break and have a wonderful week. Let's do a quick review. So energy is a conserved substance like quantity with the capacity to cause change. Hopefully we have that memorized at this point. If not, memorize it. It's almost like I may ask it on a quiz someday. Kinetic energy. So this is the energy due to motion. And we talked about in class how this motion and this energy, I should say, depends on the mass and the velocity. How bummed are you guys that like we can't go outside and do the let's just go throw stuff as hard as we can. I'm pretty bummed out that we're missing that. Now when we're talking about kinetic energy today we're just going to talk through all right what are some of the ways kinetic energy is used? What are some of the other buckets of energy that we didn't get to in class? And quick summary of kind of the reading in the textbook. So if we look at kinetic energy, kinetic energy depends on the mass of the object and the velocity. So you really don't want to get hit by a bus, even if it's only moving 10 miles an hour. Whereas if a fly hits you at 10 miles an hour, you're probably just going to be fine. Kinetic energy, this is the energy due to motion. So when we think about this energy, this energy has most to do getting things moving. When something's moving, it has the capacity to cause change. Let's talk about how this is harnessed by man. So one of the ways this is harnessed is when we looked at wind energy. And in fact, all these different types of energy that they talk about in the textbook, geothermal, hydroelectric, nuclear, and wind energy are all just ways to turn a big turbine or propeller. Now that turbine, so all of these move a propeller. After they've moved that propeller, so in the case of wind energy, the wind moves a propeller. This then moves a generator, which has got a magnet and a coil of wire. And then that's going to make an electrical some sort of electrical energy. So um, what we're really doing here is making electrical potential energy. So how does this work? In a wind energy system, so you've seen these if you've ever driven through Indiana, there are these huge, huge, like if this is a house, this is the turbine. So here's our, our big three-sided blades. They look incredible as you drive past them. They also kill lots and lots of birds. So the wind comes, whoosh, spins the turbine around and around. That turbine is connected to a permanent magnet and a coil of wire. That magnet basically pushes the electrons around the wire in a way that's going to move those electrons so that they can do some work somewhere else. Um, you plug in it in your house, perhaps. Geothermal energy, what you have is here's your house. And then you have a big water pump that 
basically going down deep into the earth. Now, connected to that, so as it moves down, the inside of the earth is hot, 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 especially the deeper you go. So you have to go deep enough that there's a temperature difference, and that's gonna cause a fluid to move and then move basically a propeller or a turbine that then is, again, moving around a magnet and a coil and changing that to electrical potential energy. Hydroelectric power, you have a dam that is full of water. And then it's got a spillway at the bottom that allows water to leave. Uh, this is a really poorly drawn picture. Um, if you do, go ahead and take a look at Practical Engineering YouTube channel, they have got some great videos on hydroelectric power and um, how these dams should be shaped to be able to control the flow and maximize how much energy is going through it. So hydroelectric, what we're doing is, is we're moving water through a set of turbines. So the water flows from where there's lots of water high up, comes down, flows through, pushes around a magnet and a coil and the turbine, and then gives us some electrical potential energy. Even a nuclear power plant, so if you've seen those, those have these big cooling towers. You'll see smoke coming out of those. Now, those that's not actually smoke as it comes out of the nuclear tower, that's steam. And what they're doing inside of here is you have a chamber that have these rods of radioactive material. That radioactive material goes through a process called fission and they get really hot. They get so hot that when you put water on them, they create steam. That steam goes up, powers a turbine. Mm, turbines are hard to draw. We're gonna draw it like this, doop, 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 doop. And that's gonna spin around and around and around, which is then moving a magnet and a coil, which is creating some electricity as we would commonly call it. So that's spinning around and around and around. And then they're using some other water to cool that steam down and cool down these rods. And then that is what you're seeing coming out the top of the plant. It's the cooling water. Um, it's not the water that's actually touched these rods because that water can be radioactive. But what we're doing is, is then we're moving kinetic energy and converting that kinetic energy of the turbine, moving the propeller, which is then creating this electrical potential energy. Even inside of a regular old power plant, this is the exact same thing. So in a regular power plant, what you do is you take coal, you burn it to heat up some water to make steam. And then you know what the steam does? Moves a turbine, which makes a magnet and a coil, to make some electrical potential energy. So in a normal power plant, and that is the power that's in your house right now, at one point that was coal. So these different types of potential energy, geothermal, hydroelectric, nuclear, uh, chemical potential energy, all of these are getting converted into the, from their potential energy to kinetic energy to move a turbine, which is then turning it into electricity as we would commonly call it. So let's talk about potential energy. So when we think about potential, it's like potential to what? Well, it's potential to cause change. So the one that we talked about in class was gravitational potential energy. We said that was UG. We also talked about how energy stored in a spring could be considered a potential energy. Here's a fun thing though to think about. So hydroelectric power, when we create a dam, let's see if I can do this better. So here's some water, here's the dam, And then here's the piece at the bottom. Whoosh, nah, I didn't do it much better. It's still pretty bad. I hope you will forgive me. You can think of dams and reservoir as basically giant batteries. What these are, are they're storing tons of gravitational potential energy. In fact, if you have a water tower nearby your house, that water tower is also a type of stored energy. That said, we're using it not to create energy in our house. We're letting it do some work so that when we open the faucet, 
it can push the water into our house. So this is causing the change that this is causing is it's allowing water to flow and to flow to the second story of your house. Now, if you had a house that was taller than all of the, um, excuse me, if you had a house that was taller than any of the water towers in your town, you would need to do some fancy plumbing in order to get that up above where that water line is. And you'll see that, again, if you wanna watch that, there's a great video on that on the Practical Engineering YouTube uh, channel, which if I can figure out how to do it, I might put a link in here. Actually, you guys are tech savvy, you can figure it out. Now, other types of potential energy that we didn't talk about, and we alluded to this with the last bit of the pie chart, chemical potential energy. So chemical potential energy, if I have a molecule, so let's say I've got a carbon connected to a carbon connected to a carbon, and I've got lots of little hydrogens connected to each of those. You were once chemistry students, so you look at that and you say, oh yeah, I totally know what that is. No, it's okay, I know you don't. Um, well, I hope you remember it, but maybe not. So each of these bonds, so the bonds, when they are broken and reformed, they can release and absorb energy. So let's say I have a lighter, which I do. So I take this lighter, wee! Oh, you're like, that's really exciting, Mr. Jacobs. I can see, super, super, wait, what's he doing? Oh no, he's a crazy person. He's lighting YouTube on fire. Uh, uh, is he gonna burn down his house? Gosh, I hope not. Is he gonna break <laughs> document camera? No, I don't think so. What did I just do there though? So what I just did was burn a little hole in my paper and you can see how that's still smoking here. What I did was is I added a little bit of energy that was called activation energy to break some of the bonds inside this paper here. Now in breaking those, they reformed into smaller molecules, in this case, carbon dioxide, water, and some of the soot particles that you see around here. When they snap back together, they're releasing tons and tons and tons of energy. So anytime we're burning something, what we're doing is, is it goes back to these bonds inside of the chemicals. So broken and reformed, they can release and absorb energy. So common forms of this that are powering your house right now, one common form is coal. So coal, we're taking and oil. These are both known as fossil fuels. Now, if you're saying to yourself, does that mean they're made of dinosaurs? Uh, sort of. They're, they're mostly made of what we think of as like the forests that were alive in what's called the Carboniferous period. So what's happening is, is all of the forests of that day somehow got compressed and covered up. And as they got compressed and covered up, some chemical changes happened to the wood and potentially the dinosaurs that were in those forests. Mm -hmm. And we got converted into these two different things. You'll also see natural gas as a byproduct of things breaking down. Now, these fossil fuels are non-renewable. That means that they were not making any more of them. They're really all that's left over, um, or the large part of that's left over, prehistoric forests. Which is really cool when you think about, oh man, my car... My car is literally running on the forests from a long, long time ago. So what are some of the consequences? Why do people get kind of worried about fossil fuels? Well, no matter how you view it, fossil fuels are creating pollutants. Now, this is coming either through car exhausts, through things that are not completely combusted, or by carbon dioxide that's released into the atmosphere. You can also see that there have been times in the not too distant past in America and in other places where we've had large oil spills. These oil spills have really big environmental consequences and have the potential to cause huge amounts of damage to the environment. Now, I know that there are many of you that may have different viewpoints on global warming, but most scientists all agree that 
our burning of fossil fuels are leading to potentially there being more Sorry for all that noise, that was my wife coming into my garage where I'm making all of these videos for you all. Um, so that's why we just had that quick pause. I kind of lost my place in my brain, so let's just go through it. So why are people worried about um, all of these things? So when we burn fossil fuels, we're releasing CO2. There's also other byproducts that can go into the atmosphere. That can lead to the atmosphere heating up which has the potential to cause some pretty big negative consequences for our environment. Regardless of how you feel about that, there's also other pollutants that burning fossil fuels have. So we're constantly on the lookout for other places and other ways to basically just turn turbines. Now, one of the earlier pieces that everybody thought was, hey, maybe this will be the answer, was nuclear energy. Because it's by and large much cleaner and safer. However, when things go wrong, we get big, big, big bad consequences. So all of nuclear energy essentially comes down to this equation right here. In fission, we're starting with a single molecule and breaking it into two pieces. Now, crucially, these two pieces have a slightly less mass than the original. S-L-I-G-H-T-L-Y, sorry. That energy, excuse me, that mass is then converted into energy and is, that relationship is described in this equation right here, E equals mc squared. So that C there is 6 times 10 to the eighth, which is a pretty big number. So it doesn't take a lot of mass to make a lot of energy potentially. Fusion doesn't really happen on the Earth. So fusion, we have two molecules moving super fast, or usually atoms, excuse me, moving super, super, super fast. As they're moving fast, they combine into a single one that also has slightly less mass than the original. Now, how this works is gone through in more uh, detail in your textbook. That said, that's it for our video for today. So I want you to make sure that you are reading your notes, and ask me any questions that you have online. All right, I will uh, hopefully see you all soon. Have a great rest of your day.